Hey everyone, so you all may be familiar with another truck reviewer on YouTube that goes by the name Mr. Truck. Kent, who is Mr. Truck, and I got together not too long ago and we decided maybe we should collaborate on some videos. Well, he told me that he'd been working to do a couple reviews on some products that he just hadn't gotten around to doing, and he said, well, maybe if I send them to you, you can do an installation and review videos on these products or items and give your feedback. I told him I thought that that would be a great idea, especially because some of the items he told me about were very focused around RVs, and you all know that I love to do RV reviews as well as accessories related to RVs. So I hope you enjoy this first video because we're probably going to work together on others down the road. Anyways, if you get an opportunity, please subscribe to his channel. It is Mr. Truck TV, or visit his website, which is www.mrtruck.com. Thanks, everyone. So hey folks, so if you have watched my channel for any amount of time, you know that I use the B&W companion hitch for the Ford puck system. Basically drops into the puck system, twists those little handles, and it locks into place. And this has been a phenomenal hitch. I really have enjoyed it. The problem with this hitch, though, is it's extremely heavy. I know that generally equates to being well-built, and I can tell you that the companion hitch is a very, very well-built hitch but it's a very, very heavy hitch to move around. That's the reason why it stays in the back of my truck. If I need more room, I disconnect it and I slide it up to the front. But the biggest problem I have with it is if I need to take it out of the truck, it generally takes taking the thing apart and then moving it, putting it back together and finding a place for it. And anytime you have to move this thing around, it's a chore. I believe both components together weigh about 130 pounds. So this is not a lightweight hitch and it's been great. I love it. It works very well. I feel very secure towing anything. I don't have a lot of chucking. It's just a really solid hitch. Now that being said, I really want a hitch that I can move to that isn't going to break my back every time I try to move it. Something that's going to be far easier to get out of the truck or into the truck. So I present to you my new hitch. This is the Anderson Ultimate Fifth Wheel Connection Hitch. This is the Gooseneck to Kingpin Mount Hitch. You've probably seen other videos on this. I actually mentioned this in a video I did on towing with a gooseneck versus a Kingpin type adapter on a truck. This is the hitch that I mentioned to be the best alternative to going to a gooseneck style adapter that attaches to your Kingpin, which I don't think is the safest type hitch, simply because of where it places the leverage. This is nice because it's going to attach to my actual gooseneck hitch and it keeps the connection to the trailer up near the kingpin so I'm not going to have that leverage point that I talked to you all about in my previous video where it essentially puts stress across the frame of the fifth wheel by lowering the point of connection and we got tons of pickup truck questions right right where do we go for the answers we go to the truck nuts book because we're truck nuts <laughs> and we wrote the book truck nuts we're nuts about truck the ultimate guy to buy the truck or yep. looking at a truck or judging a truck, you know, whether it's diesel versus gas, new versus used, what your teenagers should learn about trucks, all that. You do all kinds of cool tests. Yeah, we do a lot of testing. We do the Ike Gauntlet, world's toughest towing test up the mountain and down the mountain. We do MPG testing on the highway, loaded with trailers. Yeah. We do off-road testing. A lot of that data is in this book as well, and it's a one-stop shop for truck information. That's true. We test trucks maximum capacity up to biggest grades you can do on the interstate. Yep. So we really put them to the test. And, you know, you can get all the facts you can't find anywhere else. We do MPG tests, which you can't find on any sticker anywhere. So, you know, all that stuff that you can't find is in the book. And you can find the book at trucknutsbook.com. There are links to Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and all the other bookstores as well. So read about your truck nuts. So instead of the Anderson hitch clamping down to the puck system on the truck, instead I'm going to use the goose ball in the center and it will clamp down to that. Now as you can see, the goose ball on this particular hitch is rated at 30,000 pounds, whereas the Anderson Ultimate Fifth Wheel Connection is rated at 24,000 pounds with a 4,500 pound tongue weight. This is more than enough capacity for my fifth wheel and my pin weight. 
By comparison, my companion hitch had a 20,000 pound maximum trailer weight and a 5,000 pound maximum pin weight rating. Now the first thing I want to point out is when you get this box, even though the hitch itself weighs about 32 pounds, the entire box is going to weigh closer to 52 pounds. And that's because the coupler attachment, which is going to go to your kingpin, as well as the hitch ball itself, which is already inside of the hitch, are going to add that additional weight. But it's still surprising how light this setup is compared to the B&W setup that I currently have. And then the other thing that'll be readily apparent to you is how much larger the base is on the Anderson hitch versus the BMW hitch. The BMW hitch is a smaller base, so it doesn't take up as much room in your bed when it's in there, but it takes much, much more effort to remove from your bed when it's time to pull it out, whereas this hitch you can literally lift out with one hand. Now I've removed the coupler attachment from the box to kind of take a look at it. This thing's pretty cool. So it has this cup right here that when it goes down over the ball, it helps it slide in. And this looks like that nylon material that is designed to be greaseless, where it essentially acts as a slick surface so the ball drops right into the hole. And here's the logic behind how this actually attaches to the kingpin on the truck. So you'd take these bolts out, and of course this is upside down right now, you'd slide it over the kingpin, put these screws back in, and it attaches in the groove on the kingpin itself. And then you have these four set screws. There's two right here, two right here that you tighten, and it applies pressure against the bottom of the kingpin plate, and it keeps it from moving. This is definitely one of those items that you really want to follow the correct torquing specifications to ensure that it doesn't move at all. It's got this really nice release lever that lets you either couple or decouple from your truck or trailer. That's really nice. Now the newest version of this hitch has a ball with three adjustment holes in it for height, and that's really nice. If you want to adjust the height on the companion, you have to unbolt the entire assembly and drop the head down or raise it up, and that can be a pain. This is a really nice setup, and this ball weighs hardly anything. It would take four of these hitches to equal the weight of the companion hitch that I currently use. And again, I love the companion hitch. I think it's an outstanding product. It's built extremely well, had a lot of luck with it, but the damn thing is just very, very heavy and inconvenient to move around if you need to get it in or out of the truck. This, on the other hand, you can essentially lift it with one hand, and it feels exceptionally solid. And I know this is the newest generation of the hitch, now, when I was telling you how much wider the base is, or how much larger the base is than the companion hitch, I really wasn't kidding. I'd say it's probably going to take up about twice the real estate in the back of your truck as the companion hitch. So, in a way, to make the companion hitch a little bit easier to carry around, you can take these pins out on each side, and you can separate the two halves, the top from the bottom. But get this, if I take these pins out and I pull the top off, just the top of this alone weighs twice as much as the Anderson hitch. It's um, just hard to describe how much easier it's going to be to remove this when I'm not using it so it can free up my bed space without having to worry about pulling a muscle in my back trying to pull out my companion hitch. Here's a couple close-up shots of the hitch itself. Very well made. These welds are excellent welds. And again, this whole thing is constructed out of aircraft-grade aluminum. Very impressed with the overall construction at this point. So if you want to know how it ties into the actual hitch, once you have it mounted on the goose ball, you'll put the pin in at the bottom, and then you'll simply tighten this bolt at the top, and it will pull this assembly upwards to apply pressure while pulling the base down towards the bed, and that's how it essentially attaches to the truck. With a 30,000 pound weight capacity for my gooseneck ball and a 24,000 pound weight capacity on this hitch, I don't think I'll ever have a problem. Again, my pin weight on my fifth wheel is closer to about 21, 2200 pounds max, and this thing's rated at 4,500 pounds. So I think I'm going to be in good shape regardless. So I'm a little out of breath after moving the companion hitch from my truck. Like I said, the thing's heavy, and I broke it into two parts, both the top and the bottom half. Now, before I put this thing on, I need to mount the goose ball, and I'm not going to do the full install today, mainly because I'm not at my trailer, so I can't do the tightening of this down completely until I get to it. So. First things first, I'm going to remove the little cutout that I have here. This went around my companion hitch. I tried to use Velcro to hold it down, but then I realized I really didn't need it when I had the top on. Okay, you got to remove the little cap that covers up the gooseneck hole. 
put the goose ball in, you simply take the little top lever, flip it up and turn it to the side like that, drop it down, turn it back, and then flat, and it's now locked in and secure. On the Anderson hitch, I just have to remove this pin right here, pop the pin out. Now I'm simply going to lower this onto the goose ball with the hitch ball facing the tailgate. It tells you right here. Now once it's on the goose ball, you want to line it up to the ridges on the bed as close as possible to make sure that it's as straight as possible. So when using this with a bed rug, the key is that you have to put the weight of the fifth wheel on the hitch itself before you tighten this down. You tighten this down in the instructions it says to 50 pounds, but I'm going to tighten this down to 60 foot pounds because that's what the rep from Anderson said to do if you use a bed rug. But the key again is to put the pin weight of your fifth wheel on the hitch so it compresses it and then tighten that down to 60 pounds. So the first thing I'm doing now that I'm out at the RV is I'm cleaning off the kingpin in the plate. I had one of those little never grease nylon plates that attach underneath and I'll show you that here in a second. And it's basically in place of having to put any type of lubricant around this plate itself. But as you can see this is pretty dirty and I don't want to install the adapter on this if it's all covered in dirt and grease. And here's the plate that I removed. This is actually the side that was touching the bottom plate and that's the side that's touching the hitch of the truck. So first thing I need to do is attach the adapter underneath here. It's going to slide up right here. Then I'm going to insert the bolts through those holes. Okay, the coupler attachment's been placed on the kingpin. And a pro tip is the grease that is on your factory kingpin when you switch to this may prevent this from sliding on real well. So you might want to take like a little pocket knife and scrape it off like I had to. I've inserted the two bolts which are essentially holding the piece onto the kingpin itself. So the instructions say to use a quarter inch allen head key to tighten down the set screws which are underneath here. Now they say you need to torque those down to 40 pounds but I really don't have a way of torquing that down accurately so what they told me when I called them is just to use the allen head key to get them as tight as you can by hand and then try to do one additional quarter turn and that should be fine. Hey, big truck and big trailer. I think you did a great job of the installation of the Anderson Ultimate fifth wheel hitch. You did a great job of showing them how easy it is to install, how light it is, the way it works. Now I want to talk about why I think it's a safer product and why it can you know, help you in a lot of areas. I've been, been using adapters for fifth wheels to gooseneck balls for a lot of years and some of them are good, some of them are bad. Next, the instructions say to go ahead and put the nuts on these bolts and to tighten them down till snug. You really don't have to torque these down extremely tight, mainly because their purpose isn't to add squeezing pressure. They're simply designed to hold this adapter onto the kingpin by creating kind of a bracket that it sits on top of. Okay, so that wasn't difficult at all. So this is attached. You can see the set screws right in between here, pressing up against there. These are tightened down to where they're very, very snug, but not what I would consider overly tight. And next I have to mount this remote. They suggest doing it somewhere here on the overhang. I thought about doing it here. I ordered some neodyme magnets to connect to them just so I can magnetically attach it like I've seen some people do. However, I think I'm going to attach it right up under here because it feels like there's a solid surface that I can drill into up here. So I have now connected the remote latch here under the overhang and it went into some type of solid reinforcement that's back here. But you pull that to uncouple press it into couple. Overall, pretty clean look. If you have a bed rug in the back of your truck, it's going to stick off the bottom of the bed by about three quarters of an inch. And if that's the case, you have to loosen these two set screws back here so this bottom portion right here drops down far enough to put that pin through to attach it to the actual gooseneck hitch. Then as you unscrew this, It'll allow that portion to lower onto the ball itself.
Now again, because I have a bed rug, I'm going to tighten this down snug, but then when I load the weight of the pin onto the back, I'll tighten that down to 60 foot-pounds to go ahead and put as much pressure downwards as possible. Now I don't know if you can see, but I have my torque wrench set right at 60 pounds. So I've torqued this top bolt down to 60 foot-pounds, but I've left these two loose. Um, basically what they tell you to do is go ahead and load the pin weight of the fifth wheel on here, Make sure this tightens back down to 60 pounds again once it, you know, compresses it slightly. And then tighten these back up once you have the full pin weight on and then retighten this back to 60 foot pounds again. Being from the farm, I'm a big gooseneck ball kind of guy. And I understand fifth wheels. I, you know, it kind of originally started between the two sectors. The farmers, the ranchers like just the little ball in the bed and they can get rid of it. Turn it upside down, take it out, so they can haul hay or whatever they put in there. And the RV folks kind of copied the semi world where it had like a mini fifth wheel, a little easier to connect, uh, and it, you know, it served its purpose. It, but, but I always thought a fifth wheel connection, the mini RV, was a loose connection. Working it down to 60 foot pounds. And then these need to be torqued down to 40 pounds. It's not quite like a semi setup. So, I mean, I see these guys in California on the expansion joints bouncing around like a porpoise thing, and you can just see the fifth wheel moving forward and back, and I see that a lot. You don't usually see that with a gooseneck ball. It's like your, your socket in your shoulder. It's a nice socket to a ball, so it just swivels, so it's easier to go off-road, easier to get through dips, where fifth wheels until just a few years ago didn't even go uh, left and right. They went forward and back, and that was all they tipped. Well, now they tip all over. But uh, because they're trying to copy the gooseneck ball, which already does all that, that good old shoulder socket. So that's my, like I'm a fan of the gooseneck. And what this Anderson Ultimate Hitch does is it hooks to a ball in the bed, and then you've got a ball that connects to the fifth wheel from the adapter that goes over that kingpin. And this is a greaseless top adapter, so it's really nice. Very low maintenance on this. It's light and easy to put in there. You can take it out and store it in your garage or wherever you want to put it. But I always thought, too, if you look at truck ratings, they'll give you a higher truck rating on a gooseneck ball than it will a kingpin. So truck manufacturers think that that socket is better than, than the mini fifth wheel also. So, and this adapter, it's tall, so it actually connects just like a kingpin does at that kind of height. Very similar, which I think is good, because fifth wheels are not made as heavy duty as like a horse trailer or a commercial flatbed or any of that. So, you know, you can tweak those frames on a fifth wheel. And like one manufacturer makes most of them. So you want something strong. And the other kind of adapters you've used for years where a big clamp goes on a kingpin and it drops down, you have all these extensions on it. And everybody makes one like that. And, but they all have the same problem. And it's not the extender's problem. It's how well the, the frame is made on the fifth wheel. They don't take leverage well like that. So you start adding things to it, extend it out, you can peel off a fifth wheel. I've seen all that happen. And it doesn't even matter what brand it is. I've seen three or four brands where the, the thing peeled off the fifth wheel. And then it can crack. My brother had one where it cracked the frame up by the jacks and the jack wall. So a lot of things can happen to you if you put too much leverage on a fifth wheel. And that's what I really like about this Anderson. It's up high. The connection's good. It doesn't change the pressure on your fifth wheel when you're towing, which is what you want. So... Now guys, an observation I'm going to want to point out, and it is addressed in the Anderson user manual when you're installing this, is if your hitch protrudes out quite a bit and with the kingpin adapter being placed forward and this being placed slightly back, if you aren't careful, this part right here can make contact with your side rail on a sharp turn. And I was paying attention to my mirrors when I was turning and I saw that that is very possible in my case if I try to do a sharp turn. Now what Anderson says to do if you fall into that category like I am of, of you know, potentially making contact right here is to simply take the adapter and flip it around so the ball is now towards the back as opposed to the front. And that should solve your problem completely because it'll bring the kingpin up and it will help allow this area to clear your bed rails. So I'm going to be doing that here in a second. Okay, now what I'm going to need to do is loosen the four set screws under here, loosen this, flip this around. I'm probably going to have to unmount this, mount it on the other side, because again, with this protruding out roughly four inches ahead of the kingpin, and with the 
ball coming back roughly four or five inches, it's making it pretty dangerous to try to make a really tight turn without making contact between my bed rail and this portion of the front of the kingpin. Now this actually turned out to be a little easier than I thought. I don't have to remove these. I really don't even have to loosen them because these are just again acting as kind of a sleeve underneath the kingpin to keep it from falling off. It's these little set screws that tighten at the top right here. And there's four of them at the bottom right there and all you have to do is loosen those and the whole thing spins around like that. So I'm going to tighten those set screws back up. I'll remount this remote right here and I should be ready to go. So I've flipped the connector around or the adapter. As you can see, all four set screws are tightened up against the bottom plate. I re-tighten these down a little bit. I had loosened them just a hair. Ran the remote right here and it is now mounted over here. I'm going to put some RTV silicone on the other side so it just makes sure no water moisture gets in those holes that I had. But that's it guys. I really like the hitch. You know, the fact is that it eliminated all that clunking noise you get between the kingpin and the jaws on a traditional hitch. You don't have any of that back and forth tugging motion anymore. What I really like is how light it is. And this adapter is extremely easy to install. It's very solid and very well built. I don't think I'm ever going to have to worry about a failure with this. So I'm happy all around. I hope you like this video. I hope you like this partnership between Big Truck, Big RV, and Mr. Truck. If you do, look for more of these possibly coming in the future. Anyways, please like our channels, please give us a thumbs up, and please subscribe. I hope this video helps you understand why you might want to consider going with a gooseneck kind of adapter like this. There's a lot of advantages to it. And then please subscribe to our channels.